All right, as promised, we are back. Man, it feels good to be uh, back in the saddle, really, uh, after a, a few days off last week. But um, it is uh, it is so good to have you on board. We're at uh, we're just below 50 degrees right now in the Granite City. The sun is shining. It is an absolutely beautiful, I might even say stellar, Tuesday morning. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I have two lovely ladies who are sitting right next to me right now. Uh, Carrie, Fry- is it Freiburg? It is. Uh, it is. All right. And Susan McKnight, which is such an easy name to to uh, say. Welcome both of you thank so you, much thank you. It's from great the to be here. from the Barry Congregational Church, right here in our backyard, yes. stones throw away. <laughs> Um, so happy to have you in here, and we we might um, we might be making a, a a regular thing out of out of this to have you ladies come in here and and just kind of chew the fat and hang out and talk a little bit. We're uh, up for that. That's fantastic. Um, thank you, and thank you for reaching out to us and saying what is this all about? Uh, this this podcasting. Uh, which is such an amazing um, conduit to connect people together. And more and more people are hopping on board. And there's a podcast, as we've as we said, for every reason under the sun. Um, and this one is we're all over the road. But to bring in a local church um, is exciting to me because – there's always plenty to talk about with with regard to church and faith and what that means today and uh, the different face of it with how COVID has affected the church. And when I say the church, I mean the church everywhere mm-hmm. in our country. Um, things are, uh, in, in some regard, um, kind of slipping with members with how many people are in the congregation sitting there on a Sunday morning, um, which I remember uh, being a kid, um, a packed house. And it's different now. It's different. We've, we're, we're using technology and other means to try to connect people and keep them actively involved with their church and also their faith. Mm-hmm. Right. True. That's yes. very true. And the church is taking new forms. Um, oh, yeah. Such as podcasts. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, is it like, and like I said, I think it's uh, I think it's it's uh, it's brave of you. Yeah, I think it's it's daring. And I think it's uh, I think it's wonderful that you're you're willing to show yourself and let people hear what you have to say, your, your message. And it's a big message that we have to talk about. Um, let's, Carrie, I want to start out with you. Okay. Uh, let's introduce yourself. Who the heck are you? Where are you from? And all that. Well, I'm Carrie Freiberg, and I grew up right here in Barrie. Yeah. Um, I grew up in the Barrie Congregational Church. Yeah. That's where my family took me to church. And As a kid. As a kid. Wow. Um, sang in the choir and sat next to my cousins and my aunts and uncles and yeah. my school friends. And so the Barry Congregational Church was my church. Yeah. And um, I graduated from high school, went off to college, went off to graduate school, started my career as a school counselor in a variety of places, came back to Vermont and landed in Moortown, mm-hmm. not Barry, but close. And I attended the Waterbury Congregational Church for a while. Oh, yeah. And then I decided to sort of go home to Barry. Yeah. And um, figure out w- what Barry's all about again. Yeah. Um, looking, looking at Barry with fresh eyes. Yes. Rediscovery. Yes. And at that time, Reverend David was our minister, and um, he gave incredible sermons. 
I knew that. My sister was very, very involved in the church, so I sort of went to church every Sunday to sit with her. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was really going home. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. When did all that happen? Like, when I started coming back to the Barry Congregational Church, it was only about seven or eight years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows you, I would have guessed, uh, mm -hmm. in the congregation. Well, I, yes. pretty much so. Yes, yes they do. Uh, well, yes. There you go. <laughs> That's, and are you still singing in the choir? No, I am not. Um, I don't have a beautiful voice. Yeah. Um, Neither do I. And I sing every now and then, and Raylene is, throws things at me when I do. <laughs> um, I happen to be the head of the faith formation ministry right now, which means that um, Susan and I, who's my partner in this, we think about things that the members and their families um, might need or be interested in sure. to develop their faith. Yeah. So we do fun things like zoom conversations and we read books together and wow yeah that's fantastic mm -hmm. um the, the word faith is something that uh frankly um we everyone in the world i think uh needs a whole heck of a lot more of mm -hmm. especially over the last what two years now mm -hmm. um susan Tell me your story. I introduce yourself. I we've just met uh, off camera here uh, just a matter of minutes ago, but tell me about you. Uh, my story is a little longer about arriving at the Berry Congregational Church. I grew up in Ohio. Okay. Uh, my father was a pastor, and so church was a big part of my life. Sure. And uh, when I was 12, someone in the congregation uh, molested me. And I didn't tell anybody about that. And that became kind of a major uh, rock in the pit of my stomach and the bottom of my spirit for a long time. And when I was 18 and went to college, I ran away from the church and away from God as far and fast as I could. Wanted nothing to do with it. And um, thought I could go it alone. Yeah. Uh, that didn't work out so well for me. I did that for 17 years and ended up with a suicide attempt. This is incredible. Uh, um, I was spiritually homesick, I discovered later. And after that, I uh, began seeing a counselor about the uh, sexual abuse situation. And I started back to church um, in Randolph at the time. And... Um, I had moved to Vermont in 1973. Um, my husband went to a school here. And so we were living in Washington at the time, and I was going to church over in Randolph. And um, some, some things happened. There was, it became my new, my new church home. Then my marriage began to break up, and my husband wanted a divorce. And I had been a stay-at-home mom with our four-year-old for four years. I had been a teacher. Wow. Prior to that. I had been a U.S. history teacher prior to that. And then a stay-at-home mom. And now with a divorce happening, I needed to go back to work, but didn't want to go back into teaching. And I went to a career counselor who put me through a whole battery of tests and then said, have you ever considered uh, being a pastor? I said, no, no, that's my dad. She said, seldom have I seen such a clear, you know, calling connected to a person. She said, you might want to think about that. And there are a couple ways we could do it. You could go to seminary now, or we could get you a job along this line. And I drove home from Burlington from that appointment. And I felt like somebody had taken all the pieces of my life and tossed them up in the air. I didn't know where I was going to be, who would have our son, who'd have the credenza. You know, where I'd be living, what I was, what job, I, it was all there. And so I said, now to God, who I had found at the, who, at the bottom of life. Yeah. Um, A lot of I, us find God there. That's <laughs> where God hangs out. At the bottom. I find out. Sure. Um, I found out. So um, I said, God, I just put this all in your hands. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have no clue. And... 
two days later, I got a call from the pastor of the Barry Congregational Church. It was Richard Tosh at that time. So it's now 1987. And he said, uh, Susan, you probably don't remember me. I met you at a mission conference uh, two summers ago, which I had gone representing the church in Randolph. I said, I remember you. And he said, the strangest thing has happened. Your name has come up three times in one week. And that's just unheard of for somebody I hardly ever know, or Howard hardly know. And um, so I got the sense that I'm supposed to call you, but I don't really know why. <laughs> so how's it going for you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. And I finished, and I thought he must have hung up by now, but he was still there, and he said, well, you know what? This church has just voted to call a full-time Christian education person, and it strikes me that you might be the person for the job. And it all flashed through my mind, perfect transition from teaching to ministry, um, a wonderful way to work with people of all ages and share the message that had become central to my life, that no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter what's been done to us, Mm -hmm. we are created in love and with a purpose and with God, there is forgiveness and new life. And so I took that job, and I was there for 13 years. And then one thing after happened after another, and I ended up going to seminary on my days off. I went to Andover Newton in Boston. Days off. Yes. I commuted with once a, a week Yep, to Boston. And um, it took me five and a half years. But I graduated in 2001, and then I was called to be the pastor of the Warren United Church. So yes. that's where I was until I retired uh, five years ago. I was just going to ask when that was, five years ago. That was five years ago. So now I'm back to, at the Barry Congregational Church as a member, um, as often as I can, living in Warren. Um, why Barry? And, why why Barry? Because this, this was my church home. This is yeah. where... Um, I got remarried, mm. and I got remarried in the Barry Congregational Church, and then five years later, I had my husband's funeral there because he died of a brain tumor, and um, that's where I was ordained. So that church has many Good, wonderful memories for me. I love it, and I love the people. My goodness. <laughs> and your current pastor, who just sent us a uh, a note here with much love. Uh, Tell me about her. Um, Lee McCaffrey, uh, she grew up in Burlington and has been a pastor in a lot of different places, uh, most recently Florida. Um, We needed a new pastor after Reverend David um, retired after 28 years. That's a long time time to be at one church. Yes, it is. Very and uh, we went through an interim period with an interim minister. And during that time, a search committee formed searching for our new settled pastor. Yeah. And we found, we found Lee. Um, during the pandemic, on Zoom, we found Lee. And she left her church in Florida. She sold her home. She packed up. And moved back to Vermont. Where to she, the frozen tundra. <laughs> where she's happy to be because she has, partly because she has family over in Plattsburgh. And so for her, being in ba- in Barrie, Vermont, feels like, oh, great. I can serve um, a wonderful church that really needs me. Yeah. And I can be close to family. Remarkable. Yes. What a story for both of you. Mm-hmm. Wow. What is it that that you've organized at your church that you, I think, uh, Carrie, you spoke of earlier, that you, you, the two of you have have organized a a committee where you can, Mm -hmm. tell me about that. What is that called again? It's called Faith Formation. Okay. And um, I I would say a lot of um, Christian churches have a ministry like that. And the whole point is just to be, um, sensitive to and to be always looking for opportunities for members to grow their faith. And so um, maybe that means we get together and we have conversation once a week. Sure. Maybe it means we choose a book to read and then we discuss it. Um, 
in another few weeks, it, as it so happens, we're having an expert on um, Islam come and speak to us because we're anticipating um, refugees from Afghanistan yeah, yeah. coming in a, a matter of m weeks or months. So um, we, we are just always um, sort of trying to keep a finger on the pulse of what's, what's, what's needed and what's, what people are interested in. Smart. Yeah. Smart. And inviting people to discern how God is operating in their lives. No matter who they are. No mm -hmm. matter who they are. Yeah. And um, and figuring out ways that we can be conduits yeah, of God's sure. love um, for this world that so desperately needs it. There you go. I was mm. just going to say that. And you'll hear me say amen a lot because <laughs> I, I, I say it's part of my vocabulary uh, <laughs> it, it, so it, much. It fits so well It's really today. appropriate. It, it does. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it does. Uh, you, you wrote to me, faith can be a healing and strengthening tool for this difficult time. It all too often is used as a weapon, a container for hate and judgment, but it's best, or at its best, it can be incredibly connective, an incredibly connective balm and a launch pad for a stronger, more compassionate and authentic community. That is like, beautiful words right who wrote that was that you really that's beautiful i mm -hmm. so believe it yeah it's so true in my life and in the lives of so many people i know and it breaks my heart when i see the body of christ which um, is another word for the church being used as a weapon um to wield hatred and division and i'm better than you and you're doing it all wrong and I just don't feel that's the way God, what, what God had in mind for us. Yeah. You've also written, uh, we want to encourage people to talk about faith in their everyday lives. Faith, like politics, sex, and money, is often avoided in conversation. Amen to that, too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, these are um, essentially um, buzzwords that mm -hmm. we, we tend to, to stay away from, especially politics. Uh, but yeah, you know, and we joke around about it. Uh, the Thanksgiving table. I mean, these are just mm -hmm. places mm -hmm. you just don't go. Mm -hmm. you, you stay away from it. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if it's but Uncle especially Bob. Especially these days. Yeah, yeah. Especially these mm -hmm. days. Yeah, everything is so uh, flammable mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. uh, with, with insensitive across the whole world. It's not like it was back in the 70s and 80s, it mm -hmm. seems like, anyway. No, mm -hmm. it seems that way to me, too, and I think that's one of the big reasons that we, as part of our Faith Formation team, connected with Braver Angels. Yes. Um, and that's a Carrie Freiberg thing. Um, Braver Angels sees the dangers inherent in this division. They think this division is going to sure. do us in as a country. and Many say already has. I, I know. Yeah. And they believe that it's not only important but essential that we start being able to talk with one another across our differences, sure. through our differences, sure. in spite of our differences, and hear the stories behind the political opinions right. yeah. that are dividing us. And to me, that's a faith thing because sure. every person is a child of God, yeah. created uniquely and with a purpose. And when we forget that, and when we don't address that in the other person that we're speaking to, sure, we're I I remember my for trouble. I remember my dad saying to me a long time ago, um, in in a in an automobile you've got the fuel system, and then you've got the the cooling system, uh, and your coolant should never end up in your fuel. These are totally separate lines, mm. uh, and if you do you're going to have a problem. Um, politics and religion, maybe, mm -hmm. but maybe not. Mm -hmm. And and that's something that uh, I think a lot of us should explore. There are ways, there are ways to have conversations that uh, result in a constructive ending. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That we, it is possible. It is mm -hmm. possible. 
even a connective ending. But, but the, you know, the mm-hmm. problem is, it, it seems anyway, is that, um, you know, we believe what we believe, and it's our goal, it's our mission to convince <laughs> the other to yeah. see the light, to see our light, to, to get on board with us. And how's it, that working for it's us? It's not. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's not. Right. So we have to recognize mm-hmm. that we're going to walk away from this conversation uh, not necessarily being aligned. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. And that's okay. In fact, that's, that's okay. to be expected. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But, but we understand each but, other so much right. better. And we right. could be enriched by each other if we would there you go. If we would let that. I, I really feel, you know, um, well, many Christians say they are saved, that Jesus saved them. Yeah. And to me, Jesus saved me from myself. Yeah. Or is in the process. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> still a work in progress. We all um, are. Um, but to save me from that ego and that need to be right yeah. mm-hmm. and that need to be in control of other people and their sure. decisions yeah. and the way they live their lives. I still struggle with this every day. You can ask yeah. my, my dear husband. Sure. Um, <laughs> and, um, but I, I feel if, if we are really living our faith that we are, if we are every minute trying to put our ego aside, yeah. trying to release that ego so that we can genuinely hear what the other person, who see who that person is and hear what they have to say and read between the lines. We all have a lot of work it, to do in that department. Yeah, well, I certainly do. We all do. do. <laughs> we, we all do. We all do. Mm. And it, it's, it's amazing. Um, and, you know, we, we were just saying not long ago you, that you hear uh, more and more people saying... Um, I'm 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 not religious. I'm not the uh, the R word, uh, but I'm spiritual. Mm-hmm. I hear it every day. Uh, I'm sure you do too. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you have members in your church that say that. Mm-hmm. I'm here because I'm 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 spiritual. Um, I'm not entirely certain exactly what I believe in, but I believe in something that is much greater than me. Uh, and frankly, much greater than everything here on earth. Um, and I'm trying to connect and learn what that might be. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's there's so many f- different forms, if you will, of God out there. What is God and who is God? And I think you said uh, uh, in your notes here, uh, you said faith comes in many flavors. Um, but so does, so does God maybe in some ways that mm-hmm. there's, there's, mm-hmm. there's different avenues that you can go down, but in the end, faith is the connectivity to all gods. Mm-hmm. Maybe, mm-hmm. um, I maybe, maybe not. M- maybe not. I have okay. to think about that one, but I think faith is, does connect to something, to something beyond ourselves. I think you said it. Something way bigger than me. Something way bigger than this life. Right. Way bigger than what we can see. Sure. It's the reality beyond what we can see. Right. And Um, hear and taste and feel and and, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. This is uh, this is a this is a tall order for the two of you to bring this message to the microphones and, Mm -hmm. and to cameras to 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 have this platform to to be able to. Invite others to just be part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. I I certainly respect people who say they're spiritual, yeah, but not religious. I do too. Absolutely, and I think that there are many ways and places and times to feel spiritual, and sure. they're not always in church by any means. But I I will say that if if someone were to come to church, yes. Um, I think they would be surprised at how satisfying they would find it um, because they would realize that all are welcome there. Yes. And that they're not going to be indoctrinated into one particular line of thinking. That's right. That they can have their doubts. Yes. And um, How liberating is that? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's lovely. And so... Um, 
I, I would just suggest that, that, that church is one place to be spiritual. And so um, sure I, is. I, 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 wish, I wish more people would give it, a, give it a try and not think, oh, but that's a place where they're going to put me in a box. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Th- that's, that's exactly the, well said. And, and that's, I think, what so many of us are, are afraid of, mm-hmm. that, yeah. that uh, we're being forced to essentially uh, drink the Kool-Aid. Mm-hmm. And we really are, um, the message that we, that we push is that we're really all our own beings. Mm-hmm. And we have our own thought processes and our own, our own hearts and our own minds. And our own questions. And our own questions. Mm-hmm. And man, it, we, all have, we all have questions and Absolutely. like you said, doubts. But, but come to church and, and, and mingle <laughs> with others in your community that are exactly like you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or that are well, very different from or you. Or that are very different <laughs> from you. And I think that's, that's true. And even I better. think that's even better. And I think, uh, to put in this plug for church, I think church is a place where we can practice the things that Jesus taught us. Yeah. Like forgiving each other. Yeah. Because you know what? Nobody's perfect in that church. Oh, sure. Um, and you're going to get your feelings hurt. Or you're going to get insulted or your ego's going to hop up and down and Absolutely. not like something. And it's a good place to practice this with each other. In fact, Jesus called together a community. He w- didn't just strike out on his own. He had these 12 disciples yeah. who sometimes didn't get along yeah. and who were acted, you know, completely human. Um, but that's how his teachings play out in community. I think that's, that's the, the most powerful way for his yeah. teachings to play out. It's a place wh- where we don't see it too often in society these days where people of all generations can be together. Yeah. I remember um, a scene, this wasn't at the Berry Church, but I have seen scenes there also. It was at the Warren Church. And there was a man who had um, diabetes, and he had to have his foot amputated. And we had a little four-year-old, and it was at fellowship hour afterward. little four-year-old went over to him and said, Mr. So-and-so, do you ever miss your foot? Mm. And they had this long conversation about what it was like to be living without a foot. And I just don't know of too many places in our society where that happens. And so I think... Church, and church is also a place for us to teach our children and our grown-ups that life is beyond, that joy comes from giving to others. Sure. And our society doesn't really teach that too well yeah. either. Um, and so I think the church is an important place for Jesus' teachings and love to be practiced and lived out yeah. as best we can as imperfectly as we do it sure mm-hmm. conversations that that i've had um uh, with with others uh in 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 church is the health the sustainability of the church and its membership and its vitality mm-hmm. um it's even pre-covid right mm-hmm. Even it's, pre-COVID, it's been going going on for a while now. It has, it it's, has. I don't know, twenty years, whatever. Mm-hmm. But participation in in church, we've seen uh, the congregation, if you will, for for any church, get smaller and smaller for, for different reasons, um, and then throw COVID on top of it, and now we've got all these churches thinking outside of the box. How can we? keep our congregation together how can we keep our church together our members together um with COVID, mm-hmm. folks that are really uh, uh, afraid mm-hmm. to to come out and and be in public with right. one another so technology has has come into play which has helped with some growing pains <laughs> for i think many churches yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. if not every church mm-hmm. oh yeah Whew, yeah. Is that an understatement? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it ha- you know, it, it, it's it's and it's it's um, in some regard, um, maybe a, an an aging demographic, if you will, that attends church. How do we um, how do we push against that? How do we get younger 
moms and dads and their families, their children, to, let's, let's be honest, get up on a Sunday morning. Let's begin there. When their lives are so packed and Hello? hectic the rest of the week. You exactly. completely understand, exactly. completely get that. Let's, let's get up on a Sunday morning. Let's maybe even as, go as far as putting on some halfway decent clothes, okay? <laughs> and and then getting in the car and going to church. Well, there's that. There's that. And or how do we reach them in in other ways that's right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if if that getting up and getting dressed and coming to church is so so difficult um then what can we provide that they can do instead that fits into their lives mm-hmm. their routines right mm-hmm. right it, it, this is an on-demand world now mm-hmm. we catch what we want when we want right mm-hmm. yeah. and we have the technology to do that mm-hmm. we're on the we're all on the go everything's on the phone now right mm-hmm. or or laptop i remember um in the in in the 70s late 70s and, and 80s um on saturday mornings i would go and work with my dad he was a plumber and i would just lug toolboxes around for him and and be the go-to guy and on saturday mornings he would come into my room uh with a small cup of water from the uh from the bathroom and he would just trickle a few drops of cold water onto my face very subtle Uh, very subtle and and he baptizing you yeah yes (laughs) yes and he would sing, good morning to you, good morning to you, you look very lousy, in fact, you, or you look drowsy or yeah. lousy. Is and he would sing these. Ri- a new day. Yes, that's it, right there. He would sing these ridiculous songs that would do nothing but frustrate me even more yeah. uh, to the point where I would get up, uh, I'd be in his truck, and off we go. Sunday mornings, same thing, oh. to go to church. Oh, I know. I I know. <laughs> Same thing, and it was we 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 went to a congregational church. Um, Where was that? Uh, it, it was in uh, in Connecticut. Uh-huh. It wasn't here, uh, but um, you know. But we were expected to be out of bed at a certain. My brother and I both out of bed at a certain time, and we'd have to put the suit on. You know the suit. Oh. You know the oh yeah the blue polyester. <laughs> we'd have to put on some nice clothes. <laughs> And we'd have to be in the car by a certain time, get in, get the breakfast out of the way in the car. And as a family, the four of us, we'd, we'd go to church. We'd sit there and we'd... Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. And sweet, then we'd sweet, have to, th- this thing called the, the social hour afterwards. Oh, yeah. With mm. the tea and the coffee and the... Mm. And the cookies. Oh, God, cookies and the, mm-hmm. and the brownies. And uh, we'd be running around the, the big uh, uh, hall... Um, chasing each other around causing problems and uh then we would eventually after my mom chewed everybody's ear off we'd get in the car go home and and then the chicken or the turkey would go in the oven and and we were climbing trees in the backyard these are these are different times man they this is different this times. is different yeah different now mm-hmm. yeah for a lot of yeah. families it is mm-hmm. yeah it's just not that way Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, when the church first started, um, it was in people's homes. It was small yeah. gatherings of people. Sure. And over these millennia, it has changed shape and form as it needed to. And yeah. I think in this country, we're right. I think this is, you know, a lot of people are decrying this transformation in the church i think it's an opportunity yeah it's for us to figure out new ways to be church for new ways yeah. to spread the good news that god loves you yeah. and has regardless a of for you. all of all things well, regardless your of past all, your future regardless of all things we're, we were we were born imperfect we're going to go out imperfect mm-hmm. and the goal of the church i think is is not to make us perfect Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> that's no. not the goal. Good luck with that. But the, but, we're, but good we're good enough. We're good enough already. Good enough. Good enough, good enough mm-hmm. already. Good enough. But it, but that's not the that's not the objective. That's not the goal of, of, 
Jesus no. to no. make everybody perfect. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. We're no. all tarnished. Mm-hmm. We're going to go out that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tarnished and beautiful. Yeah. And beloved. Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but so many people don't know that. That's right. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's one of the really one of the big functions of the church is to let people know how that w- there's a God of love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and they're good enough already. They're and, good enough already. And, and, and God isn't wishing you could just yeah be a little better. Yeah, and that's just not takes you as you that, are. That's not how it works. It takes us as as we are. But I think God also loves us too much to let us stay that way. Yeah. Um, and then when we realize how loved we are, then we can become the best we can be. Sure. It's not beating it into us. Yeah. It's receiving the love of God, and then living that out. Uh, you know, little by little by little, and that's how we get to be better people. Yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 that can be painfully slow at times. Oh, yes. You think two steps forward, yeah. two <laughs> steps back. Hello, <laughs> pr- th- yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Carrie Freiberg and Susan McKnight from the Berry Congregational Church. Uh, church is every Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning at nine thirty. Nine thirty, okay. With masks. Masked yes. and distanced. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very safe. Mm-hmm. All right. And are we singing with the masks on? We singing are. with the masks on. We are. Okay. Which is probably a good thing. <laughs> For some of us. For some of us. <laughs> now, you, so I haven't been to the Berry Congregational Church, but I'm, I'm guessing, uh, or we, do we have an organist? Yes, we sure a do. A fine one. Okay. Yes, one of the best. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we're getting a brand new organ, so it's just going to be incredible. Wow. Yes. Who's? How is that all happening? The organs are not cheap. No, we. Somebody left it in, uh, left money in their will for this. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. There used to be. A, I'm, just off the cuff here. There used to be a, a show. I don't know if it's still on. Uh, but it was on public radio a long time ago called Pipe Dreams. I don't know if you remember that, but beautiful organ sounds. Mm. Uh, I just love the sound of a pipe organ. It's amazing. So um, so 930. Yes. Mm-hmm. You don't need an invitation. No. You're already invited. You've already got one. No matter who you are. No matter where who you, you are. And it's not like you're going to be uh, vetted. No. When you come in. You'll be greeted be and greeted. welcomed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, come alone, come with your family, just come to church, walk Check through the out. doors. Check it out. Sing if you want to sing. Don't sing if you don't want to sing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, do we, are we still standing up? When we, yes, when we sing. We stand up when yes. we sing. Yes. You ought to you come, J.D. Have to. That, you, that, you, that. you really ought to come, J.D. It's, it's been years. It's been years. Congregational. Yeah. It kind of, and that's, that's uh, uh, a congregational church is... Um, at least from what I remember, uh, it's almost like like one big family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Blue suit not required. Yes. Okay. Polyester suit not required. <laughs> Come in your jeans. You may. Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Even if they're dirty. Yes. You've been working, mm-hmm. whatever. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We care more about the condition of your heart. That it just be open. Yeah. Maybe questioning. And, and if you're a shy, hurting. You, yeah, right. You're hurting, mm-hmm. pain, whatever. Come um, check out our new. Come check one. out our new pastor. Mm-hmm. Y- yeah, it, it, we, we got to get her in here sometime. Yeah, we yeah. Do. Um. But but be brave and listen. If if you're the uh, the shy type, uh, maybe you're you're a bit uh, introverted. That's fine too. Mm-hmm. It's not like you have to have a conversation with everybody. No, you don't. Come to the church at the end. If you want to hightail it out of there, that's fine. If you want right. to stick around, uh, mm-hmm. have a cup of coffee afterwards, you can do that too. Well, right. not right now. Not right. Oh, we're not doing no, that now? No, no. Sorry, no cookies. No, no, because of COVID, mm-hmm. no, no. Mm-hmm. But if you want to stick around and say hello to a few people, you will be warmly greeted. Wow. What are we doing um Outside of Sundays, fair question, and, and the the answer may be, frankly, not much right now. But, but what what is the Barry Congregational Church doing um, outside of Sundays to um, 
maybe raise share some, the love of God. Yeah, maybe raise some mm-hmm. funds. Uh, have any, any kind of events or, or fundraisers, or, or is there well, anything we, going on? We have on? something called Gobble Wobble, which is a race on Thanksgiving morning, a running race, and um, it raises. For me, it would be more of a wobble. Okay, Fine. I'm just saying. Come as you are. All right. It raises it raises money for the church. Okay. Um, we, uh, other than that, other things we're doing outside in the community, we provide uh, food for the Good Samaritan Haven. Yes. Um, laundry love. Laundry love once this a month. A great What's that? Laundry love once a month. You can go to Busy Bubble um, Laundromat and do your laundry for free. Wow. We'll we, have we, somebody there to feed feed the washer. We pr- we provide the quarters and the soap. Wow! And, and the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Can, can you are you, are you still having any uh, like chicken pie suppers or anything not like right that? Not, not right now. Not currently. You missed that. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, I can see oh, it yeah. in your eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long has that been uh, not not happening? Well, since we all shut down a couple of uh, yeah. a year and a half ago. Yeah. Wow. It's been that long. Mm-hmm. We're also doing the Angel Tree Project. Tell me about it. Um, people can select uh, from this little, I think they're hanging on a Christmas tree. We work with um, um, Department of Families. DCF? DCF. Yeah. Work with DCF. Uh, families have been identified that, that need certain things. Yeah. So we purchase, it used to be items that we would get for families. Sure. And then we realized um, families like to pick out gifts for their children on yeah. their own. So we provide gift cards now. Yeah. So you can choose something, uh, pick something off the Christmas tree. This family needs a gift card to Price Chopper. Right. You know. Abishans. Abish- yes. Right. Nelson's Hardware. Isn't that right. amazing? Yeah. So we do that. We're doing that right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, incredible Mm -hmm. it's fantastic work that you're doing we're Um, also doing um zoom conversations about the four themes of advent hope joy peace and love yes and so so coming back it is blue polyester suit yeah caught me yeah yeah so you join a zoom conversation for an hour on a thursday evening or tuesday morning and there's um, six or eight of your fellow members talking about joy yeah. for an hour. Yeah. When moments, you get to do that. Moments you, in their lives when they've experienced it a certain way or. Sure. You don't get to do or that Or longed for church. it. I know. Yeah. And it seems like so many of us, I'm guilty of it too, uh, tend to gravitate towards what's going wrong. Oh, yeah. What's kind of crappy yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. um, and, and sometimes we have to look a little harder um at what's good what's yes. going what's going well what are we right. lucky for yes mm-hmm. what are we grateful for mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. yeah uh, but that's so how do we do that how do we be part of the zoom conversation that's a good question um you would contact the church or or look on our facebook page for the the zoom id there's one more one more conversation coming up um on pete no on love, love. the subject is love it's coming up in um, a week from Thursday, I think. Okay, a week from Thursday. Contact the church. Okay. Um, or look on our Facebook page. Facebook We'd page. We'd love to have you. Yes. Love to have anybody join that conversation. Wow. Absolutely. Especially they've if you're been a stranger. Great. They've been great. Especially if we don't know you, we'd love to have you. Mm-hmm. Even more so. Even more so. It's amazing. So wh- what do we want to do? What, what are we doing? Are, are we going to have um, are we gonna have you ladies, uh, Laundry Love, by the way, is tonight. Thanks, Lee. Just letting us know. Oh, thank you. Great. Laundry love is tonight. Cool. What, what do we What do we want to do? What's What's our goal here? Do, do you Can we get you in here? Uh, you know, every so often. Once a month, I'd love to. Want to do that? I'd love to. We're here. You're on board with that, Susan. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. right. And the, and then you know, uh, let's let's do that once a month, and then you know, at any point, if you ladies want to take the wheel. And drive this thing on your own. Oh yeah, you can do that too. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I, I like where I'm sitting right now. I like sitting in the window. Uh, it's it's great what you're doing. Um, I I think this is fantastic. I'm I'm thrilled to have you in here. And uh, Carrie, meeting you for the second time. Susan, meeting you for the first time. Um, and we'll just, you know, we'll just kind of talk about. 
Life. Life and, and okay. church and faith. faith. Um, How God's working, even when a, we can't see it. With broad strokes mm-hmm. here. Nothing too... And detailed. Yeah, yes. yeah. Nothing too... You know, we're not pushing any kind of uh, uh, agenda here or anything. No. We're just... This is... This is what's going on. You mm-hmm. know, we've all had some some rough waters that we've been paddling through here for the last year and a half or so. Mm-hmm. Frankly, we could all use a heck of a lot more uh, faith and um, inspiration. Good news, thank and you. good news, and good news. Absolutely, yeah. I can't wait to. And Carrie, you're you're the boss here. You're going to be telling me when when we're we're going to do this we next will, yes sometime in december i hope yeah that's wonderful it's great thank you jd thank you for opening your your yeah. heart and your mind and your studio and teaching us about welcome yeah you, you definitely have a welcoming spirit here well thank you. Yes. it is our uh, it's our pleasure and i'm already looking forward to next month please stay in touch with me i will and really raylene and if you have anything going on over there um we don't always see it uh let us know about it we will do anything we can to help promote. Mm, thank you. Super. And, yeah. And, Fabulous. And we'll get Lee in here one of these times. Good. Good. I think that would be great. Oh, yeah. She's rolling her eyes right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, ladies. Thank, thank you, you, J.D. Absolute pleasure to have you in here. Uh, Carrie Freiberg, Susan McKnight from the Barry Congregational Church this time around on Aired Out. Hey, thanks to, and we said this earlier, Raylene and I, um, our presenting sponsors, of which uh, we have a list here that is growing, and we're so excited about uh, Fecto Homes, uh, Green Mountain Mulch, Salvador and Babic, uh, the Central Vermont Chamber of Commerce, still with us, Barry Area Development, um, Cody Morrison, every Monday, he's uh, sitting right here with us uh, talking about uh, the Granite City. Uh, FGB Theaters, the Paramount Theater right here in Barrie is wide open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Same story with the Capitol Showplace Theater in Montpelier. Uh, Gusto's, uh, newly added as a presenting sponsor uh, here at the Aired Out Podcast. Uh, they got some great things that are going, going on over at Gusto's. Uh, get over there and enjoy a meal. The cook is outstanding. Uh, and bring the family, too. Uh, get over and enjoy Gusto's. Vermont Custom Woodworking, ASB Financial, uh, which is where we're located. Uh, yeah, right here, 185 North Main Street in Barrie, Retirement, Vermont. Uh, the Barry Montpelier Times Argus, Donnybrook Fight Promotion, Wright Electric, Wood Doodles. We've got an amazing display uh, right here in our studio of uh, Wood Doodles products, their cutting boards, their coasters, their serving trays, and everything else they can do. Uh, if you're not checking out Wood Doodles on Facebook today, you're missing the boat. Uh, do have a look, and I'm sure you're going to be ordering something from them for someone uh, through the holidays. Gothier's Quality Grounds and Maintenance. Preston's Kia uh, which is going to be doing some great things through the holidays. We'll let you know more. Uh, Raylene was talking about it a little bit this morning, uh, what they're doing for Thanksgiving. But Preston's Kia, what a great dealership. And thanks for your presenting sponsorship. Uh, Granite City MMA and Barslow Construction. Uh, wrapping up this time around. Uh, just a few minutes before 1 o'clock, it's J.D. Green. Thanks so much for checking out the podcast today. Be well. Take good care. And we'll catch you next time.